Hello and welcome to Microsoft Hates Greg. My name is Greg Deckler and today we're going to be trying to explain Power BI and fabric licensing. Um, now the reason for this video is, uh, you know, I think based, you know, that my last video kind of covered the the kind of hidden announcement that PBRS Power BI Report Server is now going to be included in reserved capacities for fabric that are F64 plus SKUs. Um, and we'll get into that in a little, a little bit more here in a minute. Um, and so that kind of added the kind of a new classification, I would call it, um, that we'll see where, you know, basically it's, it's a new kind of licensing uh, caveat, I guess you could call it, um, in terms of when you get that feature and when you don't. Um, it's not really included in Microsoft's other official documentation as of, as of yet that I can find. Um, the other reason is the, as I've been putting together Power BI Cookbook 3rd Edition, um, I found it that like, it's been really difficult to, you know, really keep up to date with all the licensing changes, get that into the book, um, and keep in just all the nuances involved. And I've been uh, extremely frustrating, uh, quite honestly, to, to keep track of and, and try to document within the book. Um, so, you know, there's some good, you now. I, I don't have any specific announcements regarding Power BI Cookbook 3rd Edition. There's some things that will be coming up that are exciting uh, announcements that I want to make, uh, but I haven't been released by PACT to release those statements yet. But stay tuned uh, within the next week or so. Uh, there's going to be some pretty exciting stuff coming out uh, regarding that that uh, book. OK, so that's kind of the impetus for this video um, I wanted to get into. Um, I want to go back to this this Power BI report server being included in F64 plus reserved instances. You know, I covered this in my last video, and Microsoft really kind of buried the lead with that uh, announcement, I think. Um, that's the most important thing that came out um, in the July release, in my opinion, um, was that they they righted that injustice uh, to their longtime premium customers um, in terms of yoinking, you know, Power BI report server from them. Um, so I mean, I don't know why Microsoft decided to bury that within that announcement. Um, I think it's a missed opportunity by Microsoft, right? I mean, um, if they seem to want to bury it, they might their mea culpa, right? You know, and you know, call as little attention to it as as possible. And I, but I think they should have spun it the other way. They should have been spun it as, hey, you know, we care about our customers and we listen to our customers' feedback, and our customers are telling us that you know they didn't appreciate this, and so we're going to go go and correct that mistake. Um, I don't know why they didn't do it that way. Um, I think that's a really a missed opportunity on part of Microsoft to show that they care about their customers and that they care and that they react to their customer feedback. Um, so whatever. Um, you know, God forbid I ever was in, ever in charge of Microsoft's marketing. Um, <laughs> so anyway, so let's get into this a little bit. Uh, where this comes from, um, if I can bring this up real quick. Um, right here. This comes from his Microsoft official documentation on Power BI uh, pricing, right? They've got a pricing page out there. You can kind of flip back and forth between Power BI, Free Pro, PPU, Embedded, right? And then they have the Fabric, you know, where it's free account, uh, capacity reservation, pay as you go, or as I call it, pay go. Um, and then they've got the same thing down here in terms of what's included. Uh, as far as the feature sets, right? The features and then what's included in each of the versions of both Power BI and Fabric. So this was the basis of it. Um, but then there was a whole exhaustive research that I did in terms of, you know, important changes coming to Power BI Premium and Fabric Capacities and, you know, you name it. You know, I did a ton of research to try to pull together all the different information of all the licensing that's, that's scattered out there across the uh, across the Internet, if you will. Um, and so that's the that's the real you know here as you can see right I've got Power BI Premium EM SKUs um, included as well as well as well as P SKUs I know you can't buy them anymore but there are some EAs that still have their pre their P SKUs right and I wanted a comparison between you know Fabric and then Premium and that sort of thing um, and Microsoft you know again the EM SKUs we'll get into this as well they've always been rather mysterious and not very well documented in terms of all of that. Um, they are considered premium SKUs, um, so you know I did go back and verify that this announcement re regarding the retirement of uh, premium SKUs only applies to P SKUs. So they didn't, they don't mention EM SKUs in here at all. Um, so I can only assume that they're still going to be available and you can still purchase them. Um, 
So, you know, at the at the spar side here, we have fabric free and power BI free, which are essentially identical. I'm assuming that these will merge over time um, to just be called fabric free, I guess, you know, and I don't know if that's going to also translate into fabric pro or fabric PPU. Um, I do think it's kind of a misnomer to start referring to power BI free as fabric free because you really don't get anything in fabric um, other than power BI with a fabric free license, right? You don't get it, any kind of access to any other fabric workloads um, that are out there. You really only get access to Power BI and what, what a Power BI free license would give you, right? And I would say the same would be about for Power BI Pro and Power BI P PPU, um, you know, they don't give you access to fabric workloads. So, you know, I, I think it would be a misnomer to refer to them as fabric um, since it's really only P Power BI. Um, so, you know, I think everybody's fairly familiar with this. Um, and if anybody wants this spreadsheet, you know, let me know in the comments and I, I'll, I can post it out there in my GitHub repository for Microsoft Hates Greg. Um, but where it starts to get interesting, right, is like you have your Power BI embedded A SKU and you have this, you know, the cost for this is $1, basically $1 per hour per V core is what you're paying. If you go through and do the math for what it costs you and how many V cores you get, and you divide it all out by it. I'm using 730 hours in a month um, as far as, as just as an average, you know, hours a month to be able to arrive at these uh, these numbers here. Um, but, you know, so this is something that's, you know, strays away from, I've added my own, you know, things from the Power BI. If you go through the embedded, you know, A versus EM versus P SKUs or now F SKUs and that, you know, there's embedding internal, there's embedding M365 apps. There's embedding of the secure URL and there's embedding for customers, right? And really the only thing that the ASQ gives you is the embedding for customers, okay? Uh, and that's as opposed to like an EM SKU or a P SKU, which allow, gives you the ability to embed for all of these things, internal M365 app secure URL, um, except that an EM SKU specifically does not allow you to embed for customers, okay? Uh, versus a P SKU does when you go through the licensing pages. Now, these are all in red with question marks because, you know, a premium, an EM SKU is technically a pre Power BI premium SKU. Um, it falls below your, you know, your P. Uh, it actually, I would think that I probably need to make one consume power without pack. I would say that that is not included. So there are certain things that are on an EM SKU that are, aren't included with a P SKU. Uh, for example, embedding with customers and also, you know, Power BI content, you know, paid without a user license, that's included with a P SKU, but not with an EM SKU. Um, and the rest of these things are really up in the air. And if anybody has any insights into whether these things are really included with an EM SKU or not, um, because the way Microsoft looks at it on a chart is like, you got your, in terms of V cores and that you have a P SKU, and then right below that, beneath that sitting, you know, it has eight cores for a P1. And an EM3 SKU has like four, you know, four V cores. An EM2 has two and an EM1 has one V core. Um, so they sit below, the, but they're on the same chart. And, you know, they kind of list out their dedicated capacities. They're a premium, right? Um, but I really, you know, I, these things to me are up in the air as far as whether they're really included, because I just don't deal with a lot of EM SKUs, quite honestly. Um, it's And they've always been a little weird. Um, like, you know, this is Azure. And this you can buy through the marketplace and that. Um, these you can only buy through volume licensing. Um, they've always been an outlier. They've always not been very well documented. Um, but uh, and the interesting thing is you're paying the same amount per per hour per, per V-Core uh, for premium and, and EM, whether it's a P-SKU or EM-SKU. The math works out identically. Uh, it's about 86 per hour per V-Core. Uh, so now think of your P Power BI Premium SKU. Basically, everything's included with your P SKU, right? Every, all of these features, they're all everything. You you always got everything with your P SKU, and it was about eighty six cents per hour per V core. Now, this is where things get interesting. I think um, you start getting into Fabric Pay as you go or Pay Go, as I call it, um, in Fabric Reserved. And now there's a really big difference between these, um, not only in the hourly cost, right? Before, you know, all of this stuff was identical between these two, other than what you were paying for it, except now, again, with that latest announcement, Power BI Report Server is included with a reserved instance of F64+, Plus. Um, but you do not get that those rights with a, you know, pay-as-you-go at any level. Even if you have an F, you know, yeah, 128 or whatever you want to have, uh, F16, you know, 128 SKU or F64 SKU or whatever it is, 
you know, or 2046 do, it doesn't matter. You do not get the light license rights to Power BI report server. And that, you know, to some degree makes sense. Um, and with the addition of that, right, this really at an F64 SKU level with a reserved instance really becomes equivalent to your premium SKU, right? Other than the fact that you are paying a little bit more. If you do the math, you go through, you know, how much, you know, a fabric reserved instance costs you, it's 11 cents per capacity unit per hour um, versus in, you know, if you could translate that into V cores, because there is a way to map that over, um, it, turn, it ends up being 88 cents per hour per V-Core, which is, a you know, a little bit higher than your premium SKU. But you're also paying for one lake, and you're also paying for network. Now, probably there's some people out there saying, what do you mean, Greg? You're not paying for network for, well, you're not paying for network yet, um, <laughs> would be the way that I would say it. Um, let me find the right uh, the right page here. They're all over the place. Nope, that's not that one. Ah, here it is. This is this one. So you have fabric pricing, um, and it goes through. And you know, here is your page of reservation. Here's your different SKUs and capacity units and the cost per hour and that. Then you're also paying for one lake storage, right? And then we'll get into that in a minute. Um, and then we, you also get free mirroring. That's something that I also have in my uh, chart. Um, is that you get some free mirroring if you're mirroring. Like Snowflake or Databricks content, that sort of. But down here, they have this note again, buried at the end. It's just the way Microsoft does it. Um, anything that's important, they bury it at the end. Um, network billing is coming soon. <laughs> get excited. You're going to be charged more. <laughs> right? They're like, get excited. You know, oh, this is awesome. So they basically, they're going to eventually start charging you for bandwidth, is what this really says. You know, egress and, and that sort of stuff is the way to take this, right? They're going to start charging you for ingress and egress uh, networking costs. So in addition to paying basically the same for your compute as you did for your premium capacities, then you get to pay extra for one lake storage. You get to pay extra if you have additional mirroring data, you know, information and storage there. You're going to get to now pay extra for networking as well. So hooray. Uh, <laughs> get excited. Uh, um, so that's why I have this stuff up here, these little caveats in that. Um, so this is the other thing, that I, the last thing I really wanted to cover. Well, the Copilot and Fabric, um, this is something I don't think a lot of people, some people have raised their eyebrows and like, oh, I didn't know that. Um, but basically, it's only F64 plus and it's in its non-trial SKUs, right? You have to have the, it's, you have to have paid. So you can get an, like you get a trial uh, for Fabric um, and it's an F64 trial, right? But you don't get Copilot for it. It's only with actually paid SKUs that you get that. Um, and the, obviously, you know, F64 plus for you know being able to you know being able to use free licenses to consume content but this is the one this is the one that i really i kind of want to close around close close out with is that this they include in the chart and it's in the microsoft official chart that they include a maximum store native storage they call it when it, when you go to fabric of 100 terabytes pbi storage so the interesting thing about this is that, you know, all, and this is where I think Microsoft has just confused the heck out of people with their marketing around Fabric and One Lake and all of that, is that if you look at the documentation from Microsoft, you know, around, you know, what is One Lake and that sort of thing, they have, <laughs> you know, here's all your Fabric workloads, including data, the new data, data activator, but they also have Power BI here and they have it going into One Lake, right? But so this would suggest that, your Power BI semantic models data sets are stored in one lake. Um, and that's how Microsoft's kind of pitched this. It's the one storage for everything. Um, but then you actually go to their chart and you go down to where they have this native storage. You go down to the subnote and it's for storing Power BI data sets only. Okay, but so when is that? When is this 100 terabytes of storage? You know, is it free? Do you have to pay extra when you're in Fabric for this storage? Um, or is it like Power BI Premium, where it includes up to 100 terabytes of storage for free? You don't have to pay anything extra for it. Um, you know, and then what Power BI data sets are in one lake versus in native storage, if you will. Like, okay, so I can I can assume that if I have a Power BI desktop file and I publish it to Power BI, even if it's a fabric SKU, that it's going to go into native storage. Um, that makes sense to me. That that would be the case. I don't know that for sure. There's been no confirmation from Microsoft of how any of this works. 
um, because all of their documentation around one lake is everything goes into one lake. Um, but obviously that's not true um, because they have this line item here. So, you know, but okay, but then if I create a lake house, it creates a Power BI semantic model natively for me. Is that Power BI semantic model? Is it stored in native storage or is it stored in one lake storage going to cost me more extra? I haven't seen anything on Microsoft um, about how any of that works. Um, and if anybody knows, I would love to hear from you in the comments or, you know, ping me on LinkedIn or get a hold of me somehow. Um, but I'd really like to really understand this better in terms of what goes into one lake, what goes into native storage um, and how that all works. Or maybe it's all just going into one lake, but Microsoft counts, you know, like, oh, if it's a Power BI data set, then we'll just count it as native storage, quote unquote. You know, it's some kind of, you know, behind the scenes, you know, man behind the curtain, you know, some, I don't know, some kind of shuffle game that they're doing. So I really don't know. I uh, really am kind of interested uh, to learn more about this topic. I have not seen any real blog articles about how this works exactly. Um, but, you know, hopefully this has been helpful to start start to unwind. This has been very helpful for me in, in writing Power BI Cookbook 3rd Edition to kind of put this together so I can see it all in one place and make sure I've got all my I's dotted and T's crossed, as it were, when I'm talking about licensing. That being said, and there are caveats in the book, um, that this stuff changes frequently. So whatever gets published um, uh, within Power BI Cookbook 3rd Edition, you know, will eventually probably be incorrect at some level uh, because the nuances on this stuff are just crazy these days. So that's all I had for this video. Hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time.